It feels like a part of my childhood has now been stolen from me. How does a movie simply vanish from our history? So I've decided to start doing videos on various conspiracies or paranormal events that I find interesting. I was considering making a separate YouTube channel uh, for such videos, but I think for now uh, I'm going to keep them on my main channel. So to start this new web series of mine, I wanted to discuss a children's film named Shazam. Not the 2019 DC superhero movie, Shazam, but rather a movie about a clumsy genie named Shazam and played by David Atkins, better known as Sinbad. This movie was made back in 1994-ish. It's hard to say exactly when it was made, seeing as the film does not actually exist. Or rather, according to some, the movie vanished from existence. Now, I wanted to discuss this movie because I, like many others, remember this movie. I actually came across this conspiracy because one night, when I was feeling nostalgic, and uh, decided to go back and watch some uh, movies from my childhood. Movies I remember enjoying, such as Rugrats or Good Burger. So I decided to watch this genie movie. I liked as a kid. And pretty quickly I found Kazam, which is a different genie movie starring Shaquille O'Neal. And I started watching it, but pretty quickly I realized this was not the movie I remembered. Seeing Kazam was actually really jarring. I remember thinking to myself, why would they make a bad copycat film of some 90s children's TV movie? And this is definitely not the same actor I remember. So I turned the movie off. And I kept digging, and eventually I found people discussing Shazam. Describing the movie the way I remember it happening. Explaining plot points, such as the genie being found by two kids fighting over a genie lamp. And accidentally summoning him. The children at first run away from him thinking he's a kidnapper. And that the children wished for their father to find love after their mother's death and the genie not being able to grant such a wish. I can't make anybody fall in love with anybody else. Oh, and the genie being completely incompetent. I was able to find that the earliest claims of this movie's existence comes from a Yahoo Answers post from 2019 uh, reading, Do you remember that Sinbad movie? Wasn't there a movie in the 90s where Sinbad, the entertainer, comedian, played a genie? Help, it's driving me nuts. And then two years later, somebody asked about it again, saying, It's a conspiracy. I swear this movie exists. Anyone have a copy or know where I can find proof? In both cases, they were the only people who remembered the film. Most answers explaining they're simply misremembering Kazam. And that continued to be the only mentions of this lost movie anywhere on the internet until 2015, when Vice published a story about how the Berenstein Bears were actually the Berenstain Bears. You see, there was an A, not an E. Berenstain Bears. If you want yeah, to isn't that what it is? Yeah. Your own, People think it's Berenstain Bears. The no, they're not Jews, they're bears. <laughs> bears. And many people started to believe that this was concrete evidence of the paranormal claiming this to be an example of the Mandela Effect. The belief that individuals who remember events in history that either didn't happen or happened somewhat differently are actually from a parallel dimension that spliced into our own. And they choose to believe this despite it actually being proven that the Berenstein Bears uh, were actually spelt both ways because some editor didn't care or wasn't paying attention. Since the Berenstain Bears incident, many have come forth with memories of Shazam. One man claims that in the early 90s, or roughly around 1994, he ordered two copies of this movie, brand new for the rental store his uncle owned and he helped to run. I had to handle the copies we owned dozens of times over the years, says Don, and I had to watch it multiple times to look for reported damages to the tape. Rewind it and check it in rent it out, and put the boxes out on display for rental. 
Some people have even put out bounties for a copy of this movie, offering up to $1,000 for even a bootleg copy, saying, I want to make it known that this movie is indeed real, but no such evidence has ever come up. Sinbad himself denies ever being in Shazam, cracking jokes about it on Twitter, blaming the conspiracy on the fragile millennial mind. Have you noticed no one my age has seen this so-called Sinbad Genie movie? Only you people who were kids in the 90s, the young mind, and simply trolling the people who believe the movie exists. I must have played a genie. Everyone says I did. Smile. And even confessing there was actually a Shazam movie, but he was too embarrassed of his genie skills to admit it. I just want to say, um, I'm embarrassed because I've been telling people I never did Shazam, and I did do Shazam. I'm not, I'm not proud of it when I did Shazam. I was doing a lot of crack. I think most movies, you have to bring something out of yourself, and I've never been a genie or had magical powers. It was a learning process for me as I was doing this movie, just getting into the lamp. I took a lot of yoga, uh, a lot of Crisco oil to slide up into that lamp. I mean, imagine waking up one morning wanting to watch Paul Blart Mall Cop. Yeah, just try and pretend you would actually want to watch this. But you just couldn't find it anywhere. So you start looking around a bit. Maybe you ask a friend if they remember that Kevin James movie where he played a mall cop. And they tell you that wasn't Kevin James. You're thinking of Observe and Report starring Seth Rogen. That would be pretty strange. But this is much like how those who believe in the Sinbad Genie movie feel when people say they are thinking of Shaq's Kazam. I remember thinking Shaq's Kazam was a ripoff, or a revamp, of a failed first run, like how the 1991 film Buffy the Vampire Slayer bombed, but the late 90s TV reboot was a sensation, says Meredith, who is one of the many who claim to remember both Shazam and Kazam. Now the question becomes, why do so many people remember something that doesn't exist? Well, false memories aren't uncommon. In fact, we all have them. I've never pronounced this name, so I'm going to get it wrong. But as Dr. Roreddigger, Roreddigger explains, one person's report of a memory influences another, and that false memories can spread in this way, in what he calls the social contagion. He says it is clear that this contagion would only be exacerbated online, where an individual can be influenced by multiple people all around the world in an instant. The existence of the Shazam Reddit community, therefore, arguably, helps a false memory to spread. So I looked around for any explanation as to why people remember this movie, and I found a few that might explain why people remember Shazam. Number one, Shazam is a movie from an unrealized or destroyed timeline that individuals whose consciousness were shifted into this reality can still remember. Number two, people are misremembering the time Shaquille O'Neal played a genie in Kazam. I find this one interesting because A, most people who remember Shazam say these movies are actually pretty different. And B, Shaquille O'Neal himself once talked about Shazam, saying he would make a Shazam and Kazam team-up movie with Sinbad. And when asked about the Shazam conspiracy, he said that he never heard of that one. Three, Sinbad once did dress up in a genie-like costume to host a afternoon of Sinbad the Sailor movies in 1994. Number four, a preview of Kazam was reportedly played during some VHS copies of Sinbad's movie The First Kid. Or five, or was Sinbad telling the truth, using reverse psychology to convince people that what he actually did would be completely ridiculous by exaggerating the details? Does Sinbad actually have access to paramilitary organizations? It took a lot of government intervention to get those videos out of people's homes and out of the uh, video stores. Um, Will they go to such extremes as to use experimental mind control techniques? So we were able to do a lot of mind control stuff to get those videotapes away from people. And to hunt down the owners 
of the supposed last three remaining VHS tapes. There's three tapes left. There are three Shazam videos still out that we did not find. And if we find you, we're going to kill you. And I just want you to know that. This one has some interesting implications and is actually something the government has been known to do in the past leaking real information that some people are catching on to, but adding completely ridiculous additions to what really happens in order to discredit potential whistleblowers and to cover their tracks. At the end of the day, it's probably a combination of reasons 2, 3, and 4. And even if it did end up being part of some destroyed timeline, it's not like that's malicious. I mean, it's just a children's film about a genie, to what end does wiping that from existence benefit someone? Unless, of course, losing that movie was just a side effect to something much bigger, and we're all just missing the point. Hey, I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed making this episode, being able to take a deep dive uh, into the lore of Shazam? I, I don't know. It was a lot of fun, one way or another. Uh, if you enjoyed it, you could like, comment, or sub subscri or subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. This video took a lot of work. It was literally like 12 hours of editing. So, uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. I own you, don't I? Oh, that did not age well.